guys. Today I'm going to talk about the ASVAB. So that is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. This is basically like an entrance exam to join any branch of the military. So whether it be the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, or Coast Guard, you have to take this test. It's the same test for all branches, it's multiple choice, and covers 10 different subjects. The maximum score is 99, and it's only offered in English, it's not available in Spanish. The test is free, and does not commit you to join the military. So for those of you who are unsure about joining the military, don't worry, taking the ASVAB does not mean you have to join the military. You can very well take the ASVAB and decide, hey, you know what, this is not for me, and not join after all. Okay, after you take the ASVAB, your score will be valid for two years from the day you took the test. After those two years, your ASVAB score will expire and you'll have to take it again. If you take the ASVAB and fail, you have to wait one month from the day you took the test to take it again. And if you fail that second time, you have to wait six months from the day you took that second test to take it again. So in my opinion, you're better off studying for the first test so that you don't have to waste any time, okay? And that's my number one recommendation. Study. Don't wing it. Definitely, definitely study before you take this exam. The reason why I'm saying this is because sometimes you just get rusty. It's pretty basic stuff, but you get rusty on how to do certain things. Um, it's really about getting your mindset back into test taking. So I know that for myself, I'm not a very good test taker. So getting back in that mode and forcing myself to take these practice tests, it helped me get a good grade. All right, now let's take a look at the different subjects covered in the ASVAB. You'll be tested on all of these subjects. However, the most important subjects are the ones that I have highlighted right over here uh, because these will give you your ASVAB score. So arithmetic reasoning, word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and mathematics knowledge. So make sure you study those. Uh, the combined grades of these four subjects will give you a line score. And that line score is called the AFQT score. So what does AFQT stand for? AFQT stands for the Armed Forces Qualification Test. So it's basically their way to evaluate your overall level in English and in math. So for instance, I got a 92 on the AFQT. Well, that means I got a 92 out of 99, and that is my ASVAB score. So my ASVAB score is a 92, all right? I'm not hiding the fact that I studied before I took this exam. Uh, this was a very important career move, and I took it very seriously, so I wanted to get a good grade. So I studied, guys. It's just a refresher. It's what you need. Uh, so don't do the refresher at the actual exam, all right? Study so you get all that beforehand. Um, now, practice doing divisions and multiplications by hand. Why? Well, because you're not allowed to have a calculator in the testing facility. All the math problems you're going to do, you're either going to do them in your head or by hand on paper. So something as simple as that, I hadn't done a division or multiplication on paper in a while, and I just had to repractice that, all right? Again, refreshing your memory. All right, now I'm going to talk about how the ASVAB affects you if you're joining as enlisted and as an officer. Okay, let's get started with the enlisted side. So you have to take the ASVAB. There's no way around it. Why? Because your ASVAB score determines all the MOSs you qualify for. Now, what does MOS stand for? MOS stands for Military Occupational Specialty. It's your job in the military. That's just the way they call it. Okay, so now, if you have a low score on the ASVAB, well, you'll have a limited number of MOSs to choose from. But if you have a high score, then you will qualify for more MOSs. So don't sell yourself short. Study for the ASVAB and get the grade you need for the MOS you want. Now let's talk about the minimum ASVAB score required to enlist for each branch. So for the Army, it's 31, Navy is 35, Marine Corps 32, Air Force 36, and Coast Guard 45. These are only for those who have a high school diploma. So if you only have a GED, you need a score minimum of 50 on the ASVAB. And for those who have a high school diploma and think, oh, cool, you know, I can just get a 40 and join the Army, well, don't bank on that uh, because they're looking at scores of 50 or higher. Minimum scores are a minimum. All right, just remember that. And uh, also... Uh, if you're competing with someone for the same job, well, maybe the guy with the higher ASVAB score will get the job. Again, study, set yourself up for success, and put in the effort up front to give yourself options. Speaking of options, to qualify for the Special Forces, you'll need to score 110 or more on the GT line score. To qualify for the Ranger Assessment and Selection Program, you'll need to score 105 or more on the GT line score. For Civil Affairs, you'll need to score 107 or more on the GT line score. And for Psychological Operations, you'll need to score 107 or more on the GT line score. 
Also, sometimes the recruiters will try to push you to take it as soon as possible. Tell them that you need maybe two weeks to study for it and then that you'll take it when you feel comfortable taking it, all right, because it's your life. Also, don't let recruiters push you into an MOS that you don't want. So they have to meet certain quotas and they have to fill in those MOSs. So if the recruiter is trying to force you to pick an MOS and say, look, this is all I have available. Well, you just say, sorry, I'm actually only interested to join if I do this MOS. I'm just going to wait for this MOS to become available. And that's all you got to do. And you just got to keep calling them and asking them when is the MOS available, uh, the one that you want. All right, so don't sign off on an MOS you don't want. You are the one who gets to choose. That's the advantage of being enlisted. You get to pick your MOS, and you get to lock it in with a signature. All right, they don't force you. They can't force you. You're the one in charge. And all you are to them is a number. They're just trying to meet their quotas. And for you, it's your life. It's your career. So take it seriously. Wait for the MOS that you want. Okay? Don't sign off just to make him happy, all right? It's your life, you have to make yourself happy. Okay, now let's talk about the officer side. So officers do not get to pick their MOS. The enlisted, they get to pick an MOS and lock it in with a signature and that's the MOS they will have, it's guaranteed. Officers sign a contract saying I'm willing to serve. They do not know what MOS they will get. For the Army, they first go to basic training, and then they go to officer candidate school. So it's uh, basic training for nine weeks and four days, and then officer candidate school for 14 weeks. The Marine Corps, you first go to officer candidate school uh, for 10 weeks, and then you go to TBS, which is the basic school. At the completion of OCS for the Army and TBS for the Marine Corps, that is when you make your wish list. That wish list is where you write down the MOS you want the most down to the MOS you want the least. But I'll get to that later in the video. Okay, now let's talk about the ASVAB for officers. So officers only need to focus on the four subjects of the AFQT. So word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, arithmetic reasoning, and mathematics knowledge. So officers need to score a minimum of 74 on the ASVAB. Uh, at least for the Marine Corps, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same across the board for all branches, but uh, you may want to check. If you're joining the Marine Corps, you could use your SAT score and not take the ASVAB. As long as you scored a minimum of 1,000 on the math portion and 1,000 on the English portion of the SAT, you can use that to qualify for the officer programs of the Marine Corps. Now, if you're joining the Army, you need to take the ASVAB because they're looking at the GT line score. You have to score 110 on the GT line score, and that comprises word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and arithmetic reasoning. So to come back to the wish list, the way it works is you order the MOS you want the most to the MOS you want the least. And so they just go down the list. They start from the top and then they go down the list. If they feel that you're not suitable for an MOS that is on top of the list, well, they'll go down the list and find an MOS that you are suited for. TBS for the Marine Corps is six months. And uh, for those past six months, they got to evaluate you and see your strengths and weaknesses. And for the Army during those 14 weeks at Officer Candidate School. So the instructors who evaluated you, they get to decide on what MOS you are most suited for. Apparently, if you get in your top five MOSs, you're considered pretty lucky and you should be happy about that. Okay, guys, and uh, that's a wrap. Good luck.